Mike Vrabel is the head coach of my Tennessee Titans. They, of course, lost to the Chiefs in the AFC uh, Championship game and uh, had a great season. Coach, good morning. How are you? I'm doing great, guys. How are you? I hope everybody's staying safe and uh, being healthy. What are you benching nowadays, Coach? Man, it's all push-ups. It's all push-ups <laughs> and sit-ups, Peloton. That's it. Really? I lift enough, man. I, I got my Tyler's at BC. He's offensive lineman, so he's he's one doing lifting, and and I'm trying to stay in that uh, that dad bond club. Do you ever miss hitting somebody? Um, yeah. I mean, I think you miss the 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 contact of uh, of football. I think that's why I enjoy uh, getting out there with the players and, and trying to teach and and develop those guys on the field. How do you keep in touch with your players? Uh, right now, we, you know, just using the teamwork apps, uh, sending text messages and really the way that we have the meeting scheduled um, with, through through the Zoom, I can walk. It's like I'm walking out of my office. I walk in the O-line meeting at 10. Um, I hang out there and see those guys visit with that group. That's probably one of my favorite groups um, just because of the, the types of personalities that they have in there and the bond that they have. And then I'll go in and pop in the DB meeting after that, uh, visit with those guys. And, and kind of work my way around, see the quarterbacks and receivers at noon, uh, outside linebackers after that, and inside linebackers, D-line goes at 11.30. So it's been pretty cool. We've been able to structure those meetings, and the players set the schedule that they wanted to meet, and uh, the coaches are available. How about the workouts for, for these players if they don't have a facility to go to? Uh, I think it's important that everybody stays uh, self-motivated uh, during this time. Uh, it's not something that we're trying to track. We're trying to be uh, conscious of guys' weight. There, there's two types of players when you think about our, our football team or anybody's team that um, maybe they have to con concentrate on not being overweight at this time, maybe a bigger lineman. Uh, but then some of these players that have to concentrate on, on keeping their weight up. And so really, I think they're, they're working. I think that the guys are staying self-motivated. They're, they're getting together. They're communicating with our strength coach, but we're not monitoring those workouts. Uh, let's talk about the uh, the virtual draft, the setup at the at the house. At who, the frat who, house. Who who scripted that? I don't think anybody was scripted. I think what what happened was this: is the kids were excited, like like everybody else was, and um, we we got a full house. You know, where Jen and I are here, and and Tyler's nineteen, Jackson's nineteen, and he's been with us for a year and a half, and Carter's eighteen, and he's graduating. So it, it's like lit, and obviously me, it's like a frat house. And, that's, and I never was in a fraternity at Ohio State, but I, I can only imagine that this is what it would look like. And so I think when they saw that the kids were on the screen, they wanted to do something fun. They wanted to be a part of it. Um, next thing I know, I, I look around. I, there's a Vrabel jersey from a Pro Bowl. There's a, there's a Frozone uh, costume. Um, <laughs> and, and again, I, the, the, these guys, they, 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 I love them to death. They support me. Um, and they just, you know, they were having fun with it. You, you, you kind of stole the draft there for a little bit, you know, because I, I wasn't sure what was going on. I, I certainly wasn't quite sure what was going on either. <laughs> but, uh, they're, they're good kids, and, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to keep their rooms clean and, and their cars <laughs> clean and all that other stuff. And then Belichick had his dog there. Yeah, I didn't even know Bill had a dog. But he doesn't, <laughs> doesn't strike me as a, as a dog lover. I was doing some research here. Brady's first career start, that was against the Colts, and you were his teammate. You remember that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 2001. Yeah, you guys shut down Peyton Manning. Brady's last start with the Patriots, the wild card game, and uh, you're the winning coach there. How weird was that? Did you have any sense that that was the last time Tom was going to play for the Patriots? Uh, you know, I wasn't really focused on that. I was trying to focus on preparing our team to go uh, into a place in, in January that, you know, not too many teams had won. I think they were 20 and three in, in, in the playoffs at home. But looking and back so, on that now. Um, you know, Tom and I have a unique relationship, having played with him and been in his teammate, um, being friends, and then obviously competing against them. I think it's a unique relationship. Um, you know, he had a great, phenomenal career there. Uh, and, and obviously still wants to play football. Was he in play at all for the Titans? Uh, anybody that was available in free agency is available for the Titans. I think that John and I talk about that all the time is finding ways to, to improve our team. 
Well said. Did you recruit him? Thank you, Dan. No, I, <laughs> no you don't. Uh, this isn't college football. You know, we draft them and we and we pay them. This isn't college football where you have to recruit and be on Twitter and all that other stuff. Well, I, I think Brady recruited the Buccaneers. It, it sounds like he was, you know, when I talked to Bruce Arians, it felt like Brady was saying, hey, I, I want to come there. I'm coming there, basically. Like a kid commits to going to college. It felt like that would, that's what he was doing with Tampa. I, I think that that looks like he's settled in pretty well down there. I saw his house, and uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for this thing to be done, so I'm going to go visit him and play some golf. Um, I also I wanted to ask you, and you told this story this a couple of years ago, that I think you made the mistake of saying to Tom in the huddle that you were you were open. And I I just <laughs> I, I'd gone out for a run. I'd gone out for a run. I'd been over on offense for like a week. And so they throw me in there and I run this route. I'm in the back of the ends and I'm like, Tom, Tom, Tom. And I and I come back in the huddle and I was like, I was wide open. He goes, Mikey, if you ever <laughs> Raise your hands at me again. I'll never throw you the ball. He's like, I'm the quarterback. I know who's effing open. I was like, well said. I got the point. I'm like, Rand Randy always raises his hand. You throw it to him all the time. Randy Moss is allowed to raise his hand. You oh, weren't allowed okay. to. And did you keep those footballs? What, what do you have, 10 touchdown receptions? Again, 12 if you count the Super Bowls. So that that's uh, wow. something that, that um, obviously was really cool. But – the thing that you saw on draft night, like my kids would take those footballs from the Super Bowl and we'd go back to Ohio and they'd be outside playing Super football. And it'd be like, like, I don't have any football. There's no jerseys. There's nothing up. Like I, I'm concentrated on being the best coach I can. I love our players. I miss them to death. I'm not, I'm not concentrated on, you know, what my career was. That's not going to help us. Oh no. I just didn't know if you had those footballs. No, we, I couldn't tell you. We've been through four or five houses since then. <laughs> Um, it's usually if the, the rule is if it stays in a box more than two moves, it gets thrown out. Or wow. Gets taken. Wow. Uh, how would you do if Derrick Henry was coming through the line? I would go low. It would be low. <laughs> I would be low and I'd look for the stiff arm if I wasn't low. <laughs> Who does he remind you of with that style? I, I don't know. I mean, I played bigger backs. You know, Jerome Bettis was a bigger back. Eddie George is probably a close comparison just because of the length that he was a, as a taller back. Um, Jerome was much more compact. Um, he's just very long and he, he's fast in the open field. He's just, he runs away from a lot of people and our guys love blocking for him. I love coaching him. Um, you know, he's done, done a lot of great things for us. Jerome Bettis would tell me stories. He said that he would hear defensive players grunt or groan after they tackled him because it was just, like he knew he was inflicting pain on you. I mean, he had to be my, when I was finishing up in Pittsburgh, he had to be 275. I don't know if who was bigger, him or LeVon Kirkland. <laughs> and this is but a his, running back. His calves look like grapefruits. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I can't imagine. There are guys who, you know, they get small sometimes when those big guys come through the line and then you, all of a sudden you kind of fall down or, you know, that somebody got an arm on you and you can't get to the running back. You know, it's it's trying to get those guys before they get going, because if they build up ahead of steam, if they get through the the, the line, uh, somebody's had a bad day. Uh, it's great to talk to you, coach. And uh, congrats on the success last year. And hopefully we we figured this out at some point. But uh, thank you for joining us. Well, I certainly appreciate you guys following the Titans. I, I stay safe out there, guys. Stay healthy. That's Mike Vrabel.